Justin Dorff lost 50 pounds in two and a half months with extended fasting. Thanks for being here, Justin. Uh, why don't you take a minute to introduce yourself, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Yeah, well, thanks for having me, Kayla. Um, my name is Justin Dorff. Uh, I'm primarily a content creator these days. I do still coach some men one-on-one -on -one, uh, with intermittent fasting and nutrition to lose weight. That's what I've been doing for the last five, maybe six years online for about three years now. It doesn't seem that long, but man, it's been a long time. Um, but yeah, I, I'm pretty selective in who I coach these days, um, but I do a lot of content creation around weight loss and nutrition. Awesome. So why don't you give us a rundown of how you lost weight uh, with intermittent fasting? How much did you lose? How long did it take? Okay. So Anybody who's listening to this, I don't want you, I don't want to like seem like I'm making this seem that it's super easy and really fast. It, it was for me only because I was super aggressive with it. So about 10 years ago, I was 183 pounds. So just to give you guys a little bit of perspective here, I'm five foot six. So I'm very, very short. There's nothing to me. And I'm 142 pounds now. When I lost the weight, I actually lost close to 50 pounds and I did it between two to three months. So I did it really, really quickly. Um, I don't often recommend that to everyone, especially if you're brand new to intermittent fasting. It doesn't always come off that quickly, um, but for me, it did come off quickly. And that's because I was really aggressive with my fasting protocol. Um, but really what happened was I, I went, I dropped down to about 135 pounds, found that that was not sustainable for me. And so my weight crept back up and it stayed between, I'd say 143, 150 pounds for the first year after losing that weight. Um, but because I lost the weight so quickly, it was more of a process for me to find out how to maintain the weight loss. So there was a lot of experimentation that I did after losing the weight in say two and a half months. Um, but after that first year, that's when I kind of found my groove with it. And I've been sitting between 142, 145 pounds since then. There was a period after the first year, after I lost that weight, where I added in heavy strength training and started adding some muscle to my body. And I sat around like 148, 151 for a year while I was lifting heavy every, well, I, I was going to say every day was like six days out of seven. Um, but now I, I tend to sit around 142, 144 for the most part. So why don't you tell us about your daily routine uh, while you were losing weight? And then also, <laughs> if you don't mind, talk about what your daily routine looks like these days in maintenance. Yes, I love that question. And I started laughing because, again, I, I, I like to share what my process was. It's a huge reason why I got into coaching, not just because it was successful for me, but because I made so many mistakes when I lost my weight. So my daily routine when I was losing the weight looked completely different from how I would ever tell anybody to lose weight. So I did not have any idea what I was doing. I didn't have anybody to help me or tell me. I actually didn't even have access, if you can believe it, to a smartphone or the internet. So I couldn't even look up on YouTube or on blogs to find out, is what I'm doing the right thing, <laughs> right? So when I lost the weight, the very first thing that I did was I stopped eating all carbohydrates except for vegetables because I had heard somewhere that carbohydrates are bad for you, right? And about a month in, I started getting really, really bad leg cramps. Mm -hmm. So I was really out of shape when I started. So the only thing that I could do was walk. And even just walking my Quads. When I say bad cramps, like I literally would have to stop walking after 30 minutes and the pain, it was like these seizing up pain that would last for like two hours. Oh, I would wow. just have to lay down and, and I didn't know what it was. And finally, again, because I had no help, I was like, all right, I'll try to eat an apple in between breakfast and lunch and see if that helps. And it actually did. Like after three days of doing that, um, it turns out I just wasn't eating enough food, period. So when I started to add carbohydrates back in, I had 
a lot of anxiety that I was going to gain the weight back quickly. Again, I had no idea what I was doing. And that's when I, at the same time, I was reading the New Testament and I kept coming across these passages where Jesus was saying, when you fast, when you fast. Now, I'd never even heard of fasting up until this point. I just found it very interesting that he was saying, when you fast, not when you used to fast or right. if you fast. It's something that right. like, you're just going to, you're just going to fast. Right. And the way my personality is wired, like I love testing out and trying new things. So that's what I did. Um, I started by just the first day skipping breakfast. And I remember back to the first time I ever just skipped breakfast. I didn't know what was going to happen, right? Because we're all told you have to eat <laughs> five to six small meals spread out throughout the day or you're going to die. Uh, so I had no idea what was going to happen. And lo and behold, I was completely fine. And that, <laughs> that kind of sparked the whole thing. I just wanted to continue testing to see how I could push the needle. Mm. And so what my daily routine looked like, sorry, long-winded answer That's here. Sad. I would walk probably one to two hours per day. I had a lot of free time and, and that's all the exercise I did was I, I walked. And then as soon as I started testing out intermittent fasting, um, I essentially would see how long I could fast for until I would cave in mm -hmm. and then I would cave in and then I would beat myself up again, not saying <laughs> this is not what you should do, but this is what I did. I would beat myself up be like, oh, I only made it three days. I could have made it longer. Mm. And so I'd eat for a day and then I'd go into another extended fast and then I'd make it five days and then I'd eat and beat myself up. Oh, I should have kept going. Right. Um, and yeah, that's really, that's really how I did it was extended fasting mm. for the most part. After I lost all of the weight, what my daily routine looked like then that's when I got into the more kind of standard, if you will, intermittent fasting, uh, where I would do 16 and 8 or 20 and 4. I did 30 days straight of OMAD just to test that out for myself. And again, it was kind of this process. And I know I'm preaching to the choir when I'm talking to you, Kayla. You kind of find what works for your own body by testing out these different things. It's like, okay, I'm going to eat three meals today and in three days... I weigh myself and I'm up by three pounds. Well, I need to scale it back. I need to fast a little bit longer. For the last six years, probably, my daily schedule is pretty standard. Mm -hmm. And that is Monday through Friday. Most days is a 20 and four. Mm -hmm. There are some days where I'll eat OMAD and I won't eat after dinner simply because I'm not hungry. But most of the time, it's like I, I'll eat dinner at 5 p.m. and I'll eat something else around 7 p.m. just because my wife and I are sitting around watching Netflix. Um, my weekends are pretty lax. <laughs> They're like typically 16 and 8. So if I'm on vacation, I'll have breakfast with my family or anybody else that I'm with. But and I don't really pay a lot of attention to the types of foods that I'm eating anymore. In the beginning, I paid a ton of attention to what I was eating to the point where it stressed me out if you couldn't tell. But yeah, nowadays, every once in a while too, just to throw this in here so people know this, every once in a while, my wife and I will do a 48-hour fast. Mm -hmm. Usually I'll do that after the holidays or after a vacation uh, just to reset my body weight because usually I'll, I'll go up five pounds depending on how many cookies I eat over Christmas. And uh Every couple of weeks, two to four weeks, we'll do a 48-hour fast uh, just because we've eaten a lot of crap on the weekend and we want to feel better quick. <laughs> <laughs> so have you done any longer fast than that uh, since since you've done like since your initial weight loss have you done any more extended fasting aside the, from the 48 hour fast yeah the longest that I so when I was losing the weight quickly the longest that I ever did was nine and a half days oh. and I would like to go back and do like a 14 like a two week or a 30 day fast but it's really hard for me to do it when you've got all of this other stuff going on, like your work schedule, it does affect. Like when, when you get to like day three, I've always found my energy levels plummet. Right. Even though a lot of fasting experts tell you, oh, you enter into ketosis and you have this massive amount of energy. I've never experienced that. Um, but no, the longest that I've done since those days is a five-day fast. And that's 
been twice in the last 10 years. Give us a little backstory on your weight. Like, has this always been a challenge for you, like when you're a kid or was this something in adulthood? Yeah, uh, I wish for the sake of, you know, relating to other people who have struggled with their weight for a long time. I wish that it it were the case for me, but it's not. Um, I was like rail thin up until the age of say 22. Mm -hmm. um, I was like 122 pounds, which funny side note here. When I first went to lose weight at 183, that was my goal weight. I was like, I'm going to get back down to what I was when I was in college and playing soccer all of the time. <laughs> Quickly found out that wasn't doable. But uh, no, I, I was really lean up until I graduated from undergraduate school. Uh, but I continued to eat the way that I always had when I was, since I was a kid, which is literally like not even joking. People don't believe it now because I don't do this anymore. Um, but I would eat fast food like twice a day. Like mm -hmm. I go to Burger King for breakfast and Taco Bell for dinner. And I drank more Coke than I drank water at the time. And that's what I did throughout my 20s and it was when i was in grad school in my mid 20s that i gained the brunt of the weight yeah. looking back on it now knowing what i now know essentially what i believe happened is i was building up insulin resistance all that time and eventually it just compounded so every all the bad behavior, eating behaviors that I was doing in my teens and early 20s finally like tipped that domino and I gained all of this weight really quickly in about two years. Mm -hmm. And so uh, was there a particular thing that happened that that made you want to lose the weight, like a just a particular moment or was it just kind of a thing you kind of came to gradually? Yeah, that's such a great question. I'd say... It probably was relatively quickly. So you know this about me, your listeners don't know this about me, but for the majority of my 20s, I was addicted to opiates. So even while I was in graduate school, I was on all of these pharmaceutical medications. And honestly, I wasn't even myself. I hardly remember a lot of it. It's crazy. Yeah. But when I did finally get sober, that's when it was brought to my attention by myself that I was not comfortable with the way that I looked, that I was not healthy. Mm -hmm. And one of the motivating things, there were a lot of lesser motivations, things that don't motivate me so much anymore, like the self-consciousness and worrying about what other people thought about how I looked. Like I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a motivation. The biggest motivation was coming out of addiction I, in my mind, the way that I phrase it is I had just spent or wasted, it wasn't wasted, but I spent 10 years of my life controlled mm. by external things, specifically drugs. Mm. And as I got sober, I realized real quickly that I was transferring that addiction to food. Mm. And I wanted to be the one who was in control of my own behaviors and of my own choices. And so losing the weight and cleaning up my eating habits, um, taking better care of my physical health, that was the big motivation for me. Do you still face any challenges or, or is it just like you got everything handled? Yes, never... everything's <laughs> figured out. My life is perfect now. Yes, of course I face challenges. Um, yeah, I mean, how many do you want me to list here? <laughs> All <of them>. Right, <laughs> All of them, yeah. I mean, there's definitely times when I'll still dip back into or swing over to the other end where I'm almost toying with the kind of food addiction mm. in that I'm not binge eating. There was a year where I felt like I might have a binge eating disorder, but that was just because I was being so restrictive with what I would and would not eat. But I do still use food as a reward mm. to escape you know, negative emotions at times. I have a really long day. What's going to make the evening better? Oh, let's go eat a bunch of junk food and we can just fast tomorrow. It's going to be a horrible fast, but <laughs> it, it can be done. So that that's one struggle. You know, if anybody out there is trying intermittent fasting and that's what they're dealing with, 
I've been doing it for 10 years and I'm still dealing with it at times. Uh, another struggle uh, just in the last year. So my wife and I started traveling full time mm -hmm. and I haven't been to the gym in almost a year, mm -hmm. which by the way, is going to make for a really good YouTube video, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't feel as strong, right? I'm 40 years old. I, I don't want to be losing muscle mass like I did this year. And I'm still walking. I still get some exercise just to get outdoors and whatnot. But I do feel much better when I'm lifting weights. But it's it's tough. Like it, it gives me perspective. It is hard to schedule things okay. uh, when when your when your routine is messed up. So that's another struggle. Man, I could keep going. Like struggles. Uh, I am the worst meal prepper <laughs> you'll ever meet. I, this is part of the reason intermittent fasting works so well for me. I hate calorie counting, right? Like it's just mm -hmm. so tedious. I cannot stand meal prepping. Um, not because I don't like, I could literally eat the same thing every day if I had to. I just don't like cooking. I'm like the laziest cook you've ever seen. Like my wife and I, we go through three different meals and they all are cooked in the instant pot. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds terrible, right? There's just somebody who coaches nutrition just eats three different meals out of, an, out of an instant pot simply because cooking has never been something that I've enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd rather spend my time doing other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you mentioned, you know, that you're, you're in maintenance. And so I'm curious, like, what does your decision making look like as far as you're trying to maintain, do you maintain like in a range? And if so, what is that range? And how do you think about maintenance as opposed to like, do you have a definition of success and failure or, or how do you approach it? Yeah. And those are really good questions too. So I was actually super impressed when you and I first met and you were talking about how you have this sheet that you give out to people for free that takes the average of their daily weights and gives mm -hmm. them the weekly average because I've been doing that for 10 years now <laughs> because when I first started losing weight, the daily fluctuations freaked me out. Mm. If I woke up tomorrow and weighed three pounds heavier than I did today, I would starve myself. I would fast for the whole day because I was like, I'm, I've gained three pounds of fat overnight. <laughs> so that's a huge component of maintenance for me is weighing myself every day and the fluctuations after doing it, after like tracking it daily for several months, you start to realize not only that this is normal, but the all of that anxiety from the fluctuations just goes away because you're like, oh, that's nothing. That'll be gone again in two days. Mm -hmm. uh, what I noticed with maintenance for me was the first one to two years, well, there was a lot more variability. Mm -hmm. If I went off to one end and really tested the waters and ate a lot of junk food and didn't fast as much, my weight would go up a lot more than it does now. Mm -hmm. So this is where I feel a little guilty for telling people this who are perhaps early on in their weight loss process. But it's also something that you can look forward to is the longer you maintain your new set weight, mm -hmm. the less fluctuation and variability there is. And I've got a lot of freedom with what I can eat and how, what my fasting can look like that my weight does not move that much unless I'm intentionally trying to move it. Mm -hmm. If that makes it like I yeah. have to really, really overeat in order to put muscle on or to put fat on mm -hmm. simply because my body now for the last eight years has been used to being at this current weight. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so there isn't like sometimes, yeah, there's a little bit of anxiety. If I'm not lifting weights and and I hit that 147 mark, I'm like, why am I retaining so much water today? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have eaten two dozen cookies. Um, but it doesn't stress me out because I know that that's, that's why fasting is such a cool needle mover for weight losses. If I woke up tomorrow and I was 147 and I was 141 today, so I've jumped up six pounds, mm -hmm. I can just do like three days of OMAD and my weight will settle right back to where it's usually mm -hmm. at. With all that said, what's one piece of advice you would give someone else out there? Maybe they're just starting on the weight loss journey. Maybe they're having some trouble. What What's one piece of advice that you would give them? Yeah. Oh, just one. I just <laughs> gave three struggles. Now I got to give one piece of advice. <laughs> I'd say pick one thing and focus on that until you feel like 
you've mastered it. Mm. So something that I encounter a lot and something that I myself did early on was we go from zero to a hundred in like one day. And usually that's not sustainable because you probably experienced this before. He's like, okay, I haven't been paying much attention to my health for me. It was like for the last 15 years. And now starting tomorrow, I'm going to eliminate all junk food. I'm going right. to go to the gym and exercise every single day. Uh -huh. I'm going to make sure I do stress management. I'm going to make sure I go to bed at the same time every night. It's like, you might be able to do that on sheer willpower for I don't know, a week or two, but eventually you're going to start missing some of those targets. And mm -hmm. that's actually going to erode your confidence. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, you're never going to get any, you're not going to make any real progress and get better at any single one thing. Mm -hmm. So when I say focus on one thing, I mean, it's just like what you and I do with content creation. You have to focus on one thing until it almost gets to the level of, I'll say mastery, where it's just a habit and you don't right. have to think about it anymore. And depending on what your specific goals are, I mean, that should be what you choose. So for me, it was really important to lose the weight quickly. So I focused on intermittent fasting is what I would say you focus on. If it's more overall health, then maybe you want to focus on what you're eating, the quality of food you're eating. If you want cardiovascular health, then maybe exercise is the one thing you should focus on, but focus on it until it becomes normal. Like mm -hmm. you don't even think about it anymore and it's not that conscious effort to perform it. And then you can start adding in other things because again, like Kayla's probably said this a hundred times, everybody who knows anything says it, it's about a lifestyle change. Mm. And so a lifestyle change, even if you lose the weight like I did in two and a half months, the lifestyle change doesn't occur still for, for me, it was like about two years yeah. until it all became part of just my identity and my lifestyle. So keep that long-term perspective in mind, regardless of how quickly you get the outward physical results. Is there anything else that you'd like to share? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you just, sure. Um, yeah, one of the things that I adopted early on and has been huge for me and that I still practice to this day, a lot of my content you'll see, like my YouTube videos, this is what I do is I've kept an open mind to different things and testing out and trying them out for myself. So fasting works for me, fasting works for you, Kayla. I've met people that they've tried fasting and it does not work for them. Whatever the reasons may be, not everything is suitable for every single person. I've met people that do great on keto. I've done keto and just like those longer fasts, I feel miserable all of the time. <laughs> I just got done doing 30 days of the carnivore diet, not because I want to be a carnivore for the rest of my life, just because people are talking about it. I'm like, well, I got to try it out for myself. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm talking about and I don't know what it's actually like to do it. So never lose that kind of growth oriented mindset, try different things out, give them a fair shot. If it doesn't work for you, you can try something else. But as long as you keep trying things, testing things out, I can with almost 100% certainty promise you, you will find something that works for you. And if you never give up testing those things, you will eventually get to where you want to be. I totally agree yeah. <laughs> with, yeah. with all of that. Yeah. yeah, very good. So, um, well, Justin, if people want to connect with you, is there a good way they can do that? Yeah, the best way to, if you want to connect with me, probably the easiest thing to do would be to just find me on Facebook and shoot me a, mess a message on Facebook Messenger. Um, but you can also find me on YouTube, obviously. So Facebook, YouTube, it's Justin Dorf. And then I do have a newsletter that y'all can sign up for. Fair warning, I don't hold any punches in my newsletter. So if you want some blunt truth, then sign up for the newsletter as well, which you can find um, either through my Facebook or YouTube. All right. Well, thank you so much, Justin, for sharing your story uh, and for being here. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the interview. And if you have an intermittent fasting success story that you'd like to share here on this channel, please reach out to interviews at sixmilestosupper.com. 
I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to all the insiders out there. Insiders get access to the vlog that I do for this channel. And on the vlog, I talk about what's going on in my life and what I'm eating and just kind of what I'm doing in maintenance. I also do a weekly YouTube live Q&A with insiders and they get access to the Discord server. If you'd like to become an insider, just click the join button below. Thanks.